So you've seen me use Nicodate Date Restore to reveal the dates off of old Buffalo nickels. Today we are going to be using the exact same product to see if we can reveal the dates off of even older coins. Let's get right into it. So guys, if you're watching this at home and you wanna do this for yourself, here's exactly what you're gonna need. So let's start with the product itself. So here we have Nicodate Date Restorer. It's only for nickels. And if you take a look at the back, it does contain ferric chloride, which is a chemical that is used to clean coins. Now I wanna throw a quick disclaimer out there right away, just get this out of the way. If you think you have something that is of extreme value, don't clean it. It is a very bad idea. Today we're just gonna be looking at a few cheap coins that have been worn down over time, and we're just gonna try to get the dates off and see what we can find and have a little fun. That's really all this is. But if you have something of extreme value, do not, under any circumstances, clean that coin. Get it to a coin shop and get it checked out. So the rest of the tools I'm gonna to be using today are pretty simple. Right here I just have a few toothpicks. These are just for taking up a little bit of Nicodate and uh, getting it in the small areas because you don't want to put too much on the coin at once. Again, this is all about preserving the coin as much as you can, but you still want to get the date. This is just water to get the actual product off of the coin uh, once we have sufficiently found what we're looking for. As for this little tray right here, this is just a coin holder, um, and I thought it would work nicely to put a little bit of Nicodate into so that we can uh, use the toothpicks to get it out and put it in and get the fine details off the coin. So these are the three main types of coins that we're going to be looking at today. Let's start with this one up here. So this is a type of nickel that the United States Mint put out. It's called a shield nickel, and you can see why right there. This is actually a very nice example. Now you're going to see that the date might be difficult to get on these because it's so small uh, right below the shield there. So this is going to be a, a real challenge for this product, and uh, I'd like to see if it's going to work. These go from 1866 all the way up through 1883. Moving on to our next coin, here we have the coins minted from 1883 up through 1913. The front side has a nice depiction of Lady Liberty, and then the back side has a V, which in Roman numerals stands for five, that's why it's there. And for our last coin, we have the great old American Buffalo Nickel. These were minted from 1913 all the way through 1938. This is another uh, great example of this coin. As you can see, there's the back with the buffalo, and uh, here's the Indian on the front. So here we have our first dateless coin. This is a buffalo nickel, and uh, I actually found this coin roll hunting. When I was going through a $100 box of nickels, I was able to pull this one out. On the back here, guys, I wanna point one thing out. So down here, under the five cents, right in between the E of five and the C of cents, there is a mint mark peeking through. You can see the top of a D right there, which stands for Denver. So right off the bat, we can tell that this has a mint mark, which is going to make it more valuable than a coin without a mint mark, especially for the Buffalo nickels. Um, but we don't know the date. Normally the date would be down here, right under the head, and it's pretty much completely wiped. Should be no problem for Nicodate. Let's see what we can do. All right, so for this coin, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a single drop right out of the bottle, right where the date area is, since it's such a big area, and we'll see if we can see that date up here right before our eyes. I have seen it happen before. Uh, it just takes a few seconds and then once it looks like we might have a date, I'm just gonna throw it in the water. Try not to let it get onto the neck because that always seems to happen. Uh, but we'll just give it a few more seconds. I do actually see that date starting to appear already. And uh, we will throw it in the water just a second here and hopefully we have a date. So let's see what we got that wash off a bit. This stuff isn't too bad to the touch, uh, just don't be touching it for too long. But we will see if we got a date now. Let's take a look. It looks like we might have to throw it in one more time. I'm not sure if that did it. Although it looks like I'm seeing, I think I'm seeing 1917. It's hard to see from this angle. I'll get back to you guys in a second, see if we can confirm that. All right, guys, so it looks like we are going to be able to confirm that's a 1917 Denver Buffalo Nickel. And I have the 2017 Red Book over here. Uh, just taking a look at mintages, the 1917D Buffalo Nickel only has 9.9 .9 minted, whereas the 1917 Plain had 51 million minted. So that's an awesome find, guys. This was found coin roll hunting, and you can see how powerful that stuff is. With just one drop in about 10 seconds, it reveals the date. 
Uh, easy peasy for the nick -a day right? Everybody uses this for buffalo nickels, but let's see if it's gonna work on V nickels and shield nickels. So here we have our first V nickel, which we're gonna try to get the date off of here. You can see that part of it is already exposed, so we're just gonna try to ease into this, guys. We already see 18 something. It looks like either an eight or nine, and then the last digit is completely wiped out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the nick -a date now, put a little bit of it into this tray. We're just gonna grab a little tiny bit of that nick -a date and put it onto this area right up here and see if we can just get that spot uh, uncovered. So I'll just sort of apply it as needed here. We're gonna need to be able to see the bottom of that uh, third digit because it looks like it could be either an eight or a nine. Can't say for sure yet. Um, so we're just gonna let it sit on there for about 10 to 15 seconds, I'd say and uh, see if we are gonna be able to get a date off of here. Okay, so you can see where it's worked there. You see the little spot that uh, Nick -Date always leaves. And let's bring it up to the camera here and see if we can uh, make out that last digit there. What do you guys think? I'm thinking it's definitely a nine. It's always difficult to see through the camera, but uh, hopefully you guys can see. I'm gonna check the date on that and get back to you in a bit. All right guys, so after taking a closer look at that coin, it looks like we do have a nine for the third digit. It took me a while to figure out what the last one is, but I'm pretty confident that it is a four. So we have an 1894 here, and the 1894 comes in at just five million minted. So this is one of the more rare V nickels right here, because uh, most of the other ones around that time were 20 or 30 million. This one's actually down there at just five million. So that's a really cool find. We're gonna go on to the next one and see if we can get this stuff to work again. But we'll put that one down for now and grab the next coin. All right, so here is a really interesting one. Uh, it looks like everything is fine on this V nickel. Looks just like normal, but it's just like the date is completely gone there's just no trace of it left let's see if we can recover it off of this coin so I'm going to use the same method guys I'm going to grab that toothpick out of the water and I'm going to just grab a little bit of this stuff and throw it onto the date area right here and we'll see if we can get anything to come off of it I'm just gonna apply it very conservatively like I said I don't want to be um, rubbing that date right off because with these V-nickels, it's kind of difficult. It's a very flat date. I'm seeing some of the uh, features starting to pop out under there. I'm just a little skeptical as to whether we're going to be able to get the full date off. But I'll leave that on there for a few seconds and get back to you once we got that out of the water. All right, a few seconds later, we're gonna go ahead and take that and dip it into the water now. Get all that nick date off of there. And see if we have any results on this one. Again, this was a very worn, very flat coin. And you can see the, uh, the results that we got out of this one. It looks like we are going to get this date off. And I think it's a 190 something. Let me just check really quick. Yeah, okay, it's working really well on that one. Check that out, guys. This one's a 1907. Let's go ahead and check the 1907. I don't think that's incredibly rare, guys. Nope, 39 million of these minted, so not extremely rare, but at least we were able to get the date off. So we just have this one last v nickel here to check out. Let's go ahead and apply the nick -a date and I'm actually pretty confident at this point now that uh, this will work. These coins are showing up nicely. Let's grab a little bit of the nick -a date here, throw it on the date area. I think I already saw the first two digits on this coin. We'll see if I was right about them. Yeah, that works nicely. It's really fun to just see it work right in front of your eyes. I think that should be enough. Let's go ahead and let that sit for a little while. All right, time to dump it in the water. So let's go ahead and dump it down here, see what we get. And this one's looking a little bit more difficult to see. I think we can make out the 19 though. And I'll get back to you on the other digits if I can make them out. Guys, I just remembered something really important that I forgot to mention earlier. See how I said here that the V nickels went from 1883 to 1913? Really, there were only five V nickels that we know of that were made in 1913. So they were an experimental coin, which kind of makes this really exciting because I definitely see a 19 on that. I think the next digit is a one. And if we have a three, we're millionaires. So that's where this stuff can be exciting. But uh, I'm not sure yet. I think we're gonna have to apply a little bit more nick -a -day and then we'll decide after that. All right, I think we should have our results. Let's go ahead and dump it down. 
gonna rub it off a little bit. Don't want to have any lingering uh, chemical there because you don't want to you don't want to burn it down too far. You just want to get enough so that you can see the date area. So guys, I gave this one just a couple more shots of Nick date on those last two digits, and I have determined that this is a 1912. Now, there's another interesting thing about that. I know, bummer that we didn't get the 13, but 1912 is the one date on the V-nickel that has a mint mark. Now I gotta check, I gotta look up where that is because I've never found a 1912 before. So this is actually pretty exciting. Unfortunately, okay, I just looked this up guys. It's, the mint mark is somewhere in this completely blank area. So guys, I can't say I was expecting this, so I wasn't really prepared to uh, put it in that area, but it looks like we do have a 1912, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some Nicodate down where I think the date should be. I don't know exactly because I've never found a V-nickel that had a, a mint mark, but it should be right about in that area. You guys can see the V and it's down in the uh, bottom left corner. So I'm just gonna kinda apply it more liberally here and uh, see if we can get anything to show up. I might have to leave it on for a little bit longer because this is a very worn out area of the coin. Um, but I'm just stoked, guys, to have a 1912. I mean, you don't get this opportunity very often. All right, I think it's been on there long enough. It's starting to turn a little bit darker color, which means it's been soaking on there, We're removing some sort of material off of the front. And it looks like we have some nice details, so we should be able to get the mint mark off. I'm gonna have to take a close look and then let you know uh, whether we got it or not. So just be back in a sec. So if there is a mint mark, it would be right under that dot in between United and Sense. So here is the Nicodated area that we just uh, put the Nicodate on to see if we got the date. As you can see, there's that dot right there that we were talking about, and there is nothing under it. So we don't have a mint mark on this coin, unfortunately, but it's still a really cool find because we got a 1912. It's pretty much the last year that the V-nickels were made, which makes it special, but of course there was the 1913 thing. Um, but those are pretty much next to impossible to find, so I'm glad we were able to get that one. And uh, without any further ado, guys, let's get right into the shield nickels. So here we are on our final coin today. Let's see if this is gonna work. Again, guys, 1866 to 1883 is the date of the shield nickels. I have three specimens here. We have uh, a couple, and guys, again, I bought these in a coin shop for pretty cheap. Um, this one actually, this one even says free. So we'll see if we can get a date off of that one. But this one is gonna be our first target. It's 1880, and then it's hard to pick out the last digit. Um, so we're gonna see if we can get that one off. This one's a little bit more worn. This one is actually really exciting. I'm gonna show you guys this real quick. So the thing about 1870s coins is that there's not a whole lot of them. For some reason during that decade, they just didn't make a lot, you know, in Indian head pennies and nickels as well. There's not a lot, but I'm pretty sure we have an 1870 something. So we're gonna try to get that last digit off and confirm that that is a seven. And uh, that'll be a really cool coin. You can see that the backside on this coin is just phenomenal. So starting off with the 1880 something here, we do know that this is either going to be a zero, one, two, or three because they only made these up through 1883. There's the coin. The date, like I said, is gonna be right under the shield here. So let's go ahead and grab a new toothpick here because the other one's getting a little old and grab a little tiny bit of Nicodate because we just wanna reveal those last two digits. Let's see if we can do it. Just grab a tiny bit out of that tray there. And again, these dates are very small. That should just about do it there, guys. We're gonna see if we can get that to come off here. And we're gonna leave it on there for about 10 seconds, dip it down in the water and see what we have. Um, and as you can see, as you wait a little bit, that drop will spread, so you gotta be careful there. All right, I think I see the date already coming out. Let's go ahead and just dump it down in the water here. Get that nice little discoloration there. I don't know if it's nice or not, but let's see if we got a date. Yeah, we definitely got a date, guys. Uh, I think it's 1880, it's either a two or a three. I'm gonna check that real quick. All right, guys, just checked it under my own eyes there, and it's definitely an 1882. You can tell by the way that the uh, bottom of that number goes. Just a little bit different from a three, and that was sort of expected. The 1882 is one of the um, most common shield nickels out of the entire lot at 11 million, and the 83 would be 1.4 million. So that's definitely an 1882. One thing to point out, there is a variety here. I'll bring it up in the book. 
1883 three over two variety, so that would be something interesting to find. But you can see the 1882 is a pretty high mintage, pretty common coin. Still really cool to find and just be able to, you know, determine that we have that for sure. All right, let's get into the next one, which is going to be this, which I think I'm the most excited about here. 1870 something, let's see what we can get. So here we have the coin guys, and this time I'm gonna use the finer end of the toothpick because I don't wanna put too much on here at all. I think that's probably the best way to go about it. These dates are so small, it's really difficult to see. But you can see how tiny of a drop that I'm putting on there, and I think that that should just about do it. If I grab a couple of those drops, just place it on that last digit there, and we should be able to get it with just that little bit of a little amount there without having to damage any more of the coin. So let's go ahead and see if this is gonna work for us, guys. Just give it a couple more seconds and then throw it down in the water here. And we'll see if we got anything off of there. This is a difficult one to see, but I think we have 1874, which comes in at 3.5 million. Not the rarest of the series, but it would make sense. I was thinking originally it might be an 1871, which would put it at only a half a million really difficult to find coins under a million minted but um, I'm pretty sure it's an 1874 that's what I'm seeing at least but again this coin is very worn out the camera's actually having a hard time focusing on it just because it's so worn down but I think that's what we have even if it's not showing up very well it's an 1874 shield nickel so still guys really awesome to find especially in the in the 70s like that I don't have very many 1870s coins um, but we do have one more shield nickel to give a try and we might just end up dowsing this one in the stuff I mean it is very beat up um, But you're gonna see the date area coming around here. So let's go ahead and open it up All right guys, so there you have it. There's the back side. You can see the lines of the shield just barely There's the five uh, We're gonna go ahead and just grab a big old glop of this stuff Put it on there and see if we can make anything out again with this date being such a tiny area you really need to cover the whole thing for it to be uh, discernible in any way so i'm just gonna drop that down right there let it sit for just a few seconds here so while that nickel date is sitting on there i just want to give you a little history lesson about shield nickels so they were started in 1866 and they had a little bit of a different design uh, before they went to this more standard design i'll show you because i have an example right here this is an 1866 shield nickel. And if you flip it over to the back, you'll notice that there's not only stars back there, but there's also these rays in between the stars. And uh, that's sort of how they did it on the very first year. Now they did it on the second year as well, but they sort of switched halfway through. So if you have an 1867 shield nickel that doesn't have the rays, it's actually more common than one with the rays. So if you have the rays on the 1867 shield nickel, then you're in luck. That's a pretty rare coin and uh, pretty cool to have. But this right here, guys, is an 1866. We can already see the date on that one. So I have the first year. I have the second to last year because we just found that. And uh, I guess we're gonna have to find out what this one is. You can see it's turned very dark. So I think it's about time to drop it into the water here and uh, see if we can get anything off of it. I'm just gonna give it a quick dry on the uh, mat here. Bring it up to the camera and see if anything is visible. That's pretty tough to say. I think there's an eight, so this is 18. Well, of course there's an eight. All of these were made in 18 something or other. But uh, I'm gonna have to look at that off camera and see if I can get back to you on it. So I'm not getting enough detail on that first round of Nick -a date to uh, distinguish the date for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and put one more round on it, but I'm pretty skeptical at this point. I mean, this thing is just, beyond the point of return. So I'm gonna put on one more sheet and uh, see if we can get it after that, but I'm not gonna go any further than that. This thing's pretty messed up. I think we're about ready to take that second layer off. Let's see what happens here. I don't know, guys. Taking a look at it now. Just doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Um, yeah, it all looks the same here. I'm really just darkening the tone of it. This is pretty much exactly what happened in the last video. Um, but you know, I wanted to put this up to the test, see if it really could uh, get at those coins that have just been beat to hell. Um, but it looks like it's not going to be able to do this one. But anyways guys, I really enjoyed doing this video for you guys today. It was really fun. If you want to try this for yourself, 
go out and pick up some of this Nick -a -day stuff. I mean, this bottle is gonna last me forever. I've already done two videos and I'm barely through like a tenth of the bottle. Um, you can get it on Amazon for five to 10 bucks. It's not sponsored, I'm just letting you guys know where you can get it. Um, and then all this other stuff is pretty much just common household, you know, use whatever you got. Also, in case you missed it at the beginning of the video, I was using the 2017 Red Book. This is a great resource for anyone getting into coin roll hunting. It's always the first book that I get, and I always update periodically. So I have the 2006 version, 2011, now the 2017. Uh, 2018 is out though, so you should get that if you have the chance. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I love all your support. I recently just hit 5,000 subscribers, so there is gonna be a giveaway coming up for that very soon. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to go down below and leave a like. It helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you're new, because I post new videos like this every single week. And as always, I'm Quinn, and this is Quinn's Coins, signing out. And I will see you in the next one.